This is Digital Pathology Today. Now here's your host, Dr. Joseph Anderson. Prosha and Ibex Medical Analytics have teamed up to offer an integrated AI-based solution to help pathologists better detect prostate cancer. Welcome to Digital Pathology Today. I'm Joe Anderson. On this very special edition, we have the CEO of Prosha, David West, as well as Joseph Mosel, CEO of Ibex Medical Analytics, together to discuss the partnership. We're here with David West from Prosha and Joseph Mosel from Ibex Medical Analytics, and we have some very exciting news. Prosha and Ibex are, are teaming up to deliver an integrated AI-based digital pathology solution, specifically targeting prostate biopsies. So I think this is a, a great opportunity here from both of the CEOs, not only about the little, a little bit about the history of their companies, but how the partnership came to be and, and what they hope to get out of it. And I think it's also interesting for us outsiders looking in at these exciting new companies, because I think questions people have, because there's you know several startups and new companies in the space delivering AI-based solutions in digital pathology. Can all these companies survive? Is it going to be a competitive environment? Is there opportunity for collaboration? Do the companies do slightly different things so there's opportunities for them to team up and, and get synergy? So I think this is going to be a great uh, conversation. So congratulations to both of you on the news. And so let's start with David. David, uh, tell us a little bit about the history of uh, Prosha and what you've done there so far. Um, so Prosha is a digital pathology software company. It's a product of something that uh, I got involved in eight years ago uh, when I was at Johns Hopkins and working in, at the time, was the sort of most primitive forms of computational pathology. Uh, we weren't using that buzzword. Uh, the work that I was involved in was quantitative nuclear morphometry using much less advanced techniques than we have at our disposal today. The idea was the same. The opportunity to take a field of medicine that is so central to the whole medical system and bring it into this data-driven discipline, use computers and images to rethink how we look at diseases like cancer. We started as a humble project with a big vision that turned into a real company uh, around 2016. We've raised about $35 million to date to build digital pathology software and help accelerate the world's transition to digital and help use that data to rethink how we diagnose diseases like cancer. Yeah, I'm a little biased, but I think pathology, and ma many would agree, is, is kind of central or foundational to the practice of medicine, and in particular, cancer diagnostics. Many would also agree that we've been a little bit behind the times in terms of, in relation to all the great technology that's available out there in our everyday lives. You know, why hasn't pathology gone digital faster? We've been using this light microscope for over 100 years. You know, once we are able to digitize things, we're going to be able to unlock computational pathology and, like you said, kind of bring data to the field that was has been sorely missing, I think, for a long time. Uh, and Joseph, tell us a little bit about IBEX and, and your background there. Yeah, just a comment before I do that. I was talking a while ago with a CEO of a hospital who told me, you know, when you start a hospital, there's two things you need to have. It's a kitchen and a pathology department. And the, the rest is uh, nice to have. Yeah, so uh, I started IBEX, uh, or we, uh, together with my, my co-founder, Chaim Linhart, uh, about the same time when Tokyo started out in 2016. And this started out as kind of a result of a conversation we both had with my brother-in-law, who happens to be a, a pathologist. And he had a lot of, we learned a lot about pathology, lots of stuff, but what was, what was really striking for us in that conversation was when we realized that pathology is actually not digital. <laughs> we were kind of, when we realized that actually pathology is still is practiced on a, on a microscope. And he showed us, yeah, but there, are, there is this technology coming into play called digital pathology. And that was kind of the, the, the eureka moment for us when we did one plus one and we said, okay, there's this new technology coming in. Uh, we know what AI can achieve, and there, there should be huge potential here. So that, that's what got us starting the company. We very quickly partnered with Maccabi Healthcare Services. That's a, the largest uh, HMO here in Israel. Through them, we have uh, access to a very, very large-scale pathology lab. And a few years into the future, we had our prostate application running there. It was the first AI application running in a live clinical setting. 
To date, we've raised uh, just over 50 million. David, tell us about Concentric, which is your product at Prosha. You know, what, what exactly does that platform do? You know, how did you develop it and where is it deployed now? Concentric's a platform with humble beginnings that when I think back to the first version of Concentric, it was sort of like, I would say, analogous to Google Drive for pathology. But we always had this vision that digital pathology software is where all the value is created in this field. It's where the pathologists, the scientists spend all their time. There's a huge opportunity to make an incredible user experience, A, B, to be able to support what is an incredibly data-intensive discipline, digital pathology. I mean, we're talking about gigabyte-sized images, a billion pixels per image, and many of these labs are producing thousands of these images or terabytes of data a day. And C, do this in a way that's computationally native. And I think that's a really important part about how we view concentric and how we view the future of pathology. Digital pathology really represents not just a shift from microscope to monitor for me, and I think for many people, it represents an opportunity to leverage that data that's being created by the scanners. Concentric supports workflows from the second that slide leaves the scanner to the integration with the list system to image management and viewing to computationally enabled workflows that are streamlined, automated, and rich with information. Many people may not realize just, you know, how many different moving parts there are to this, right? In the analog era, which was not too long ago, tissue would come in, it would get grossed, put into the tissue processor, converted into slides, pathologists would review it, generate a report, maybe dictate it into the, into the machine, or maybe a transcriptionist would transcribe it somewhere. You know, then that would have to go into a separate LIS system. The report would somehow be released. So it's very fragmented, you know, very piecemeal, very fragmented, very manual. So is the idea to kind of bring that all under one umbrella, a seamless solution. And that's not even to mention in the actual real work of the pathologist making the diagnosis. You know, so I think there's a lot of workflow pieces, but then helping the pathologist, you know, to get start off, get the right cases to the right pathologist, and then maybe, you know, help them ease the workflow and help them with the diagnosis. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when I got involved in this space, this was very much in its infancy and to date had been an entirely hardware-led revolution. When you talk to someone in digital pathology, the same patterns would always emerge. It's too much data. These images are massive. I mean, literally at Hopkins, we were sending hard drives of images to our collaborators across the country. At that point, you might as well just ship glass. What's the point in digital pathology when you're shipping hard drives physically with FedEx? And I think that's just a little bit of a flavor of how hard digital pathology really is. But to me, these were all solvable problems. And I think to many technologists in this space, we looked at that and said, well, you know, why isn't pathology digital? We do have the technology from a store and compute infrastructure standpoint, from a computational standpoint, et cetera, to make this happen. And in many other fields we're dealing with, you know, much more advanced workflows and technologies, et cetera, this is possible in pathology. And there's a lot of building to be done that goes on behind the scenes. But if you can take the pathologist and uh, you know, workflow and make it as seamless as it is for the, for the microscope, so at least be on par, but then go beyond that, that's where digital pathology becomes really interesting. But if the pathologist is spending their time wrangling with the, with the, with the technology, digital pathology doesn't work. And I think that's what we heard a lot. Especially to us pathologists who may not be so tech savvy, you know, it could be a little bit intimidating, you know, having to log on here, log out of there, move this over here. Just really having a seamless solution under one umbrella that's very user-friendly is kind of what's been missing, I think. And now, Joseph, uh, tell us about the Galen system. A lot of what we do in pathology revolves around kind of the high volume cases or business, so to speak. You know, so I think the heavily screened diseases such as prostate, breast, colon, kind of lends itself to, you know, not only workflow solutions, but then also AI solutions to, en to enhance the diagnosis. So tell us a little bit about Galen. So Galen is our uh, computational pathology platform. So it's uh, AI uh, technology with different modules for different types of uh, tissue. So as you mentioned, we have today already, we have modules out there for uh, 
for prostate cancer, for breast cancer, which are running in a clinical setting. And as, as you alluded, there's also uh, other, other tissues that make a lot of sense for this kind of uh, technology. The, the main value proposition of, of the, this kind of technology, of our technology, is that it drives uh, better quality uh, and better efficiency in the, the practice of uh, pathology. And I have to say that the more we deploy it, the more we see it in action, we, we realize how much quality is indeed an issue. So uh, diagnostic error is not something unusual or rare, but something that we see on a daily basis. And when I say see on a daily basis, I literally mean within our systems, uh, whenever there we, we catch some, that, that kind of mistake, a very large number of uh, diagnoses change as a result of the, the Galen platform being deployed. The use cases, so you, it can be used either for primary reads, primary diagnosis, or as a QC step? Yeah, so it's, first of all, it's not just for prostate. We already have prostate and, and breast algorithms and expanding the, the portfolio. And there's two primary use cases for the platform. So one is what we call the second read. So that's real-time quality control. So instead of kind of traditional quality control where you have pathologists doing a small percentage, maybe 10 percentage, if at all, of the cases and, and redoing them, uh, IBEX second read scans 100% of the cases and raises an alert in case of diagnostic error. The first read application is already a tool the pathologist uses while doing the diagnosis. So you can think of it as a pathologist assistant. It helps uh, triage the slides, it marks the regions of interest, and it allows the pathologist to do the case much, much faster. Uh, it is important to stress that in both cases, eventually the signing out of the case is done by a pathologist, of course. Right, yeah, the human being hasn't been replaced just yet. Now, where is, where is Galen deployed? We've talked to Mariano de Socaraz uh, from Core Plus. Uh, he's using the system in the Americas. I, it seems to be deployed extensively in Europe. So maybe tell us a little bit about that specifically, where it is and any regulatory concerns and what future rollout plans would be. Yeah, so we have deployment here in Israel, already covering a, a very large percentage of the Israeli population because we have kind of very centralized healthcare system. I'd say around 30% of the Israeli population is, is covered by, by our product. Uh, we also have deployments uh, in the EU, in the U UK, and even in uh, far-flung uh, Australia. Uh, in terms of uh, the regulatory clearance, we already have regulatory clearance in the EU. That covers also uh, other, other geos, also working in that direction in the U.S. All right, so let's talk about the partnership. I think this is great news. I think people are excited about it. I think it's ultimately going to be result in better care for patients. It's going to help the pathologist do a better job, and, and also the doctors taking care of these, these patients are going to benefit as well. And then the business aspect is, is fascinating to see how folks are able to uh, collaborate in this space and kind of build on each other's strengths and take advantage of what each does best. So maybe, David, uh, tell us about how you go about evaluating the possibility of, of a partnership and kind of what things you were, you were thinking about? Yeah, I think it always starts with the customer, pathologist, the laboratory. We were really excited about what IBEX was doing, kind of clear complementary technologies between our platform and IBEX's solutions, computational solutions. I think we have shared vision. I don't want to speak too much on your behalf, we have a shared vision for what the future of pathology will look like. Having great, well-integrated workflows is key. And I think as these especially high-volume laboratory operations look to deploy uh, new computational technologies uh, across their ecosystem, we want to make that very seamless. We want to make that really powerful. So the product synergies were very clear as well. I think those are the, really the, the two ingredients. I'll also... Uh, I'll also say that IBEX has, has a great team, great to work with. Um, so between kind of people and customers and product technologies, the, the synergies are very clear. Joseph, how about you? What were your considerations going into a, a partnership? There's a quote by Napoleon who said that amateur study strategy and professional study logistics, I think the equivalent for our field is that professional study integration. And everyone okay. who knows something about this business, you get to that question very quickly. So they, they, they like the technology, they like the AI, but they want to understand how does it integrate? How does it integrate into the hospital system and what's the customer experience? Uh, much as David was uh, describing, we hear this from all of our customers. So it's not something theoretical. 
And that drives our philosophy. I mean, we think what we do best is develop the computational modules, and that's what we want to focus on. And we want to partner with other companies in the domain, those are the kind of the best of breed, uh, with the best successes, and, and bring together integrated solutions uh, that customers want. And I, I think by, by doing these collaborations and partnerings and building the ecosystem together, uh, where we'll eventually uh, reach is what customers really want, and which is uh, standards. I will echo the, the comments by, by David that we really like working with the, with the Procia team. Some of the members there, some of the people there, we have a very long uh, history, and I'll just mention, I'll thank Arun <laughs> uh, yeah. from Procia, who's re really kind of uh, helped, uh, we know him for a long time, and he helped bring this together, and he deserves a lot of credit for this. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, it's important also when you partner with someone to, to see that you have the same vision for the, the business, for the, for the future of this field, uh, and we found that with, the, with the, in Procia. Getting an integrated solution in the spirit of cooperation, I think is fantastic. And what I'm hearing from both of you is we have a lot of room to grow, right? These are just kind of very early days in the field, right? So there's a lot of room to grow and a lot of room to work together. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. We're at absolutely the first inning of this space. I've seen an article from the U.S. Department of Defense News and talking about the Joint Pathology Center, as many know, one of the largest, I think the largest archive of pathology slides in the world, 55 million slides, all of which are going digital. And I think that underscores the opportunity that we have in digital pathology, and it underscores the infancy of this space. There is so much data that is going to be created over the next few years. And there are so many technologies that are gonna result as a product of that. So we're just seeing the beginnings of this. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic example. Like that was the what, the former, what used to be known as the AFIP, right? Which housed, which was kind of the center of pathology expertise in the US, you know, for over 50 years, right? The 1950s or 70 years to present, right? And it's all just sitting there on shelves, glass slides and in textbooks and people's minds. So I think there's so, so much opportunity, you know, to digitize that and really mine all the rich data that, that is clearly there. Uh, I completely agree. So tell it. So before we wrap up, let's dive into specifically what is the partnership going to look like? What is this integrated product going to look like that incorporates Concentric and Galen? You know, I, I can touch on this at a high level. Of course, prostate cancer is prostate workflows are something at uh, core to to much of pathology for some of the reasons uh, that you that you mentioned earlier. And at this uh, at this point, you know, we we've got a great integrated solution um, that, that we're putting together you know, with the concentric platform and uh, the Galen prostate solution kind of working, working in harmony for computational, well-integrated computational workflows. Yeah, so I mean the, the joint solution, I think it's, it's a first step we're doing towards a vision of really working within a workflow, the concentric workflow, but enjoying the benefits of the Galen platform from within that context. So and what customers really don't want to do is have the workflow in one application and then AI uh, within a, a different application. They don't want to be working with, with two screens or two browser tabs and moving from one and switching contexts. And that's what we're bringing to the market now, allowing to use, uh, enjoy the, the benefits of a concentric workflow and use Ibex AI and all the benefits of that within that context. Real quick before we wrap up, David, uh, what you know, what do you see on the horizon, or what excites you in the next ten years or so? Ten years is a lot of time, um, especially in this space at this pace. I think we're on the cusp of an explosion in data and new technologies that are going to be created as a result of that. Give or take, there's something like a billion slides created for diagnostic purposes every year, and a very small fraction of those slides today are digitized. I think within the next 10 years, we can confidently say that the vast majority of those pieces of glass will have a corresponding image. That image uh, will reflect the true record. When we think about the potential, you know, not, not only for that shift to digital, but for the technology ecosystem that can be created around that for new types of accelerated workflows, increased quality of diagnosis, the ability to develop drugs faster and marry what's happening in cancer research and cancer diagnostics 
with pathology at the center, uh, there's a lot to be built. Absolutely. Joseph, what do you think? Yeah, so I'm willing to, to make a gamble in uh, 10 years from now. So I, I think digital pathology will, will become standard and the, the use of AI uh, will be viewed almost as compulsory, I think, within uh, the practice of uh, pathology. But as David was, was alluding to, I think that the, the most important revolution is actually the, the data. That this creates a new modality of data, that quantitative features you extract from pathology slides, and this will, together with other forms of data, all the other omics, uh, will feed into uh, better treatments for patients and eventually better outcomes. And I think that's that, that, that will be the big revolution. Better outcomes, indeed. Well, David and Joseph, thank you so much. We'll see you next time on Digital Pathology Today. This has been Digital Pathology Today. Please be sure to subscribe. Thanks for listening.